but uh, the way to achieve them is never easy. Uh, and uh, have you already identified any possible obstacles on this way and uh, how you, do you want to overcome them? Uh, I don't see any specific problem. Maybe it could have been the lack of direct contacts, but we are changing that with my visit in, in Kenya. Uh, and we establish a new level of our contacts, both at political and also uh, business level. And I hope that uh, the new treaties, treaties on air services uh, and the double taxation will be finished soon and I hope will, it will help deepen our trade, investment and, and contacts. Just to confirm what uh, Prime Minister said, in fact, if there was an impediment, it has been unlocked by the visit of the Prime Minister to Kenya. He's coming here, speaks volumes of the new uh, perspectives that under the leadership of Prime Minister Czech has decided on a clear policy on engagement with Africa, which we welcome. It's a very positive development and we need to ride on it, build on it, and drive our interactions uh, using that uh, momentum. And the, the, the agreements that uh, are now in the pipeline uh, on the Kenyan side, I think we have four pieces of agreements that will now go to cabinet and then uh, so that we can sign those agreements that are mutually beneficial, that will provide the framework for us to elevate this engagement uh, to the next level. So I think the journey of a thousand kilometers has started and I, we, are, we are very well focused on walking this journey together. And I took a part yesterday at the Kenyan Czech Business Forum and one of our Kenyan friends uh, has a speech, uh, a speech and it was, they said very interesting sentence. He said, there are no problems. There are no problems, there are opportunities. <laughs> it's very important and if our friends see the situation so, I, I can agree. There are no problems, we have only opportunities for Wonderful. appropriation. His Excellency the President, His Excellency the Prime Minister to retreat. We have also explored with the Prime Minister possibilities of making it easy for citizens to travel. And uh, I have undertaken to him to look at the possibility of visa waiver for Czech citizens to visit Kenya without any restrictions so that we can enhance our uh, trade and we can also enhance our tourism uh, sector. As you are all aware, Kenya was uh, voted by the Lonely Planet, which is the biggest tourist uh, uh, magazine and enterprise globally, that Kenya is the best, Nairobi is actually the best destination to visit globally. So we want to make it easy for people to access Nairobi uh, as it has been rated very highly globally on countries and towns that globally people would want uh, to visit. Of course, it is because of the profile we have given Nairobi and the profile we have given our country over the last uh, couple of years to make Kenya an interesting destination to visit. So again, we are making this offer to uh, the uh, people in the Czech Republic. And the Prime Minister already confirms to me that he will come back because he, he has seen that uh, this place is, is quite interesting, especially to come and pay a visit. Even as our governments, corporations, and individual entrepreneurs engage with the tremendous opportunities arising out of our continent's vast potential, it is important for forums like this 
to lead the way in continuously developing, refining, and providing high-quality, evidence-based, data-driven analysis, strategies, policies, as well as other varieties of essential knowledge and insights that enable both public and private sector leaderships to make smart choices and take sound decisions in order to initiate and sustain ambitious transformation on a continental scale. You occupy a very special place in making us succeed. The body of knowledge and expertise that we have in our universities, starting with Strathmore, could close the gaps that we have much faster, much more efficiently, if we created the correct networks and worked with um, our institutions seamlessly. In other words, we are not going to take chances with this unprecedented moment in the history of global development. Rather, we are investing in and supporting the development of relevant strategic, analytical, and advisory bandwidth to make sure that our public and private sectors enjoy sustainable access to the best in intellectual capacity and resources available as they formulate policies, strategies, and set out to succeed in a brave world that we all want to be part of. This is how I contextualize the launch of the AFCTA Policy and Development Center here in Strathmore, which signifies Kenya's readiness to support Africa's transformation through robust complementary activity in the academic and uh, scholarly space. And I am completely aligned with what uh, the Secretary General of SCFTA mentioned on two issues. The easing of trade, especially on payment of goods and services in our continent. How do we marry the efficiency of our trade with which happens in different currencies. And in the Africa uh, Heads of State Assembly in February next year, we will be adopting the Pan-African payment system that has been uh, crafted by Afriexing Bank as the instrument that is going to allow this continent to trade in our local currencies and avoid the unnecessary loss of about 5 billion shillings in trying to um, transact in different currencies. So we are properly aligned. In fact, Kenya is a champion. And we've been asked to host the headquarters of the Pan-African payment system in Kenya. And because we are leaders in the technology space, and because we are also promoters of African continental free trade area, and any institution that supports the integration of our continent, we have gladly accepted to host the headquarters of the Pan-African payment system in Kenya. Let me also confirm that technology is going to play a very important role. And that is why I agree that the ministers are going to conclude on making sure that we bring legislation, we bring regulation, and we agree on how technology is going to support our trade um, uh, capabilities and possibilities. And as a result, the whole tech space is a space that we must pay very special attention. And it is the reason why I traveled to America to the Silicon Valley with the assistance of my good sister Meg, so that we can 
speak the language of technology to the leading companies globally. It is the reason today uh, the chair of uh, iLab here says Apple is looking at opportunities in Kenya. They have never imagined that they can look for opportunities in Kenya. But because of the profile we have created, because of the pitching that we have made, and because even them, they can now begin to see opportunities in Africa, because that's where the future is, we are now beginning to leverage on interests in our, in our continent. I want to confirm that Kenya is already aligned in terms of data centers. We have already committed 1,000 acres in Naivasha for the development of data centers with green energy. Because we believe that this is a service that we do not need it just for Kenya. We need it also for the region. And this is one export we can also export globally. Uh, technology is going to play a big role um, uh, making sure that our business people are not unnecessarily un encumbered by looking for this currency and that currency to be able to trade. We will try and see how, whether we can take that out of the equation so that they can concentrate on enhancing trade between all our countries. So we are properly aligned. We are, uh, Kenya is in the, in the right space uh, for us to be able to move this uh, forward. And I want to ask all our institutions to work with us in building the institutions that will support our progress, that will support our development nationally, regionally, and globally because we need the input of everybody. Um, I believe that the launch of the Africa Continental Trade Area Policy and Development Center represents a pivotal moment in Africa's development journey. It provides a platform for us to work together in a borderless, cross-sectoral, multidisciplinary, an inclusive manner to build a prosperous future in which Africa is a globally competitive driver of world economic affairs. And I welcome all of us to put forward your best ideas, your best perspectives, your best insights in making sure that this works, not just for Strathmore, but not just for Kenya, but ultimately for our continent and for the world. Africa's youthful population is projected to increase exponentially to 1.7 billion in the next seven years and 3 billion by 2063. I am convinced beyond any doubt that the youth are the future and our greatest asset. By investing in education, vocational training, and research and development, we can unlock the innovative potential of our youth, equip them with the necessary skills for the future, and keep them at the forefront of Africa's economic transformation. I am very sure that universities, starting with Strathmore, are doing exactly that. And I am saying so, not from hearing. I am saying so because two members of my family have actually been through this university. So I am speaking from knowledge and I'm speaking from experience. And so that's what must happen continuously with all our other universities. Furthermore, it is imperative that we foster a categorically pro-business environment characterized by transparent, unpredictable regulations, robust legal frameworks, and protection of intellectual property rights. This will attract foreign direct investment, encourage local entrepreneurship, incubate innovation, and promote responsible business practices that create 
quality jobs and contribute to sustainable uh, development.